now we still have a tie out here between the two groups on the left. So to break that tie, I'm going to have to erase this dot and move the dot one step further out and erase this list and erase this dot and move the dot one step further out and erase this list. Now make, let's make a list of the three atoms that each of the dotted atoms is connected to. Um, now, first of all, I hope that you can see that this carbon here is attached to two methyl groups. This carbon is attached to two methyl groups, which would count as two carbons. Now, if that's at all unclear to you, remember that the safest thing to do is to uncondense the notation a little bit and actually draw out the methyl groups. So I'll go ahead and do that. The condensed notation that we had a second ago really means that this carbon is attached to two separate methyl groups. So anytime you're finding condensed notation confusing, just erase it and try to replace it with a less condensed notation. Now, what are the three atoms that this carbon is attached to? Well, here we have another pi bond. Remember that we're supposed to go backwards along the pi bond, back towards the stereocenter to count this carbon again. We go back along the pi bond, back towards the stereocenter and count this carbon again but we don't go back along the sigma bond. That's just not the way that it works. You always go backwards along pi bonds, you never go backwards along sigma bonds. So we count this carbon again just once, and we, um, then we can count this carbon and this carbon. And that gives us our normal list of three atoms. We kind of can tell that we're doing it correctly as long as we always end up with a list of three atoms. If we start using these rules incorrectly, we're going to end up with either too few atoms or too many atoms in our list. Let's try that again over here. Now, the best thing that this carbon is attached to is this fluorine. Remember that you have to write the best thing first. What's the next best thing that this carbon is attached to? Well, we can go backwards along this pi bond, back towards the stereocenter, and count this carbon. In fact, we have to do that. We're supposed to go backwards along any pi bond, back in the direction of the stereocenter, and recount that atom. But we should not go back along the sigma bond. Instead, we just count this hydrogen. And that gives us our three atoms. Well, the first point of difference is that this fluorine beats this carbon. So up here we have the number three priority, and on the bottom left we get the number four priority. Let me point something out again um, when you're comparing these two groups. Let's point out the importance of using the first point of difference principle. The first point of difference here is that this fluorine beat this carbon. That's why this got a higher priority than this group. Uh, a lot of people have an incorrect understanding of the uh, rules for determining priorities. A lot of people have learned wrongly that you're supposed to, or, or they think they've learned that you're supposed to add up the atomic numbers. They think you're supposed to add up these three atomic numbers and compare it to them. Well, if you did that, I think that this would come out to be a higher priority. Three carbons uh, added together is going to be more than a fluorine, a carbon, and a hydrogen. But remember, the, the method I just described is a mistake. That's what you should not do. Um, you should not be influenced by um, adding together all of the atoms. Instead, you just look for the first point of difference. Here, this fluorine beat this carbon, and then it was completely irrelevant what the other atoms were in the list. It's completely irrelevant that this carbon is better than this hydrogen, because we never got to the point of comparing them. The first point of difference was the first atom in the list. So, once again, it's always important to emphasize this first point of difference principle. Now that we're ready to determine R and S, let's erase our work. Okay, now where's the number four priority? It's not pointing away from us. Instead, it's in the plane of the page. Well, we've got to get the number four so it is pointing away from us. So we have to swap it with the number three. We've swapped the four so it is pointing away from us. Now we can determine the configuration of one to two to three. Clockwise, or R. But what was the configuration of the original molecule before we made the swap? Well, according to the single swap rule, before the swap, it must have had the opposite configuration. So the correct answer to this problem is S. This stereocenter has an S configuration. The big new thing that we've covered in this problem um, is when do you need to go backwards, back along the path, back towards the stereocenter, and recount an atom when you're making a list of the three atoms connected to the dotted atom. And again, the rule that we've learned is you should never go backwards towards the stereocenter along any sigma bonds, but you need to always go backwards towards the stereocenter along any pi bonds. Otherwise, if you don't follow those two rules, you won't always end up with three atoms in your list.